Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Table Talk. I'm your host, Jake Combs, and tonight we have a massive unboxing uh, in store. We have a ton of boxes, uh, actually five boxes from Warcry. We have the last uh, expansion for Blackstone Fortress. We have uh, the most recent issue that's been released of White Dwarf. Uh, I know that we're about a week or two away from the new issue to be dropped. And then we also have the second season of Blood Bowl. Um, I know that officially as of today, uh, technically meaning yesterday, uh, depending on where you're at in the world, this was available for pre-order. Now a lot of shops are strictly doing a uh, one pre-order per household, per person. Um, so it is rather limited. And the goal is to get everybody copies that want one. Um, and having to rely less on scalpers. Now we're going to hold off on this one towards the very end. It is a very heavy box, I must say. Uh, so we're going to get started with Blackstone Fortress Ascension. Now, this does come with two models and uh, looks like several new map tiles. After this one, the only one we have remaining is the uh, uh, No Respite box. And unless they release that again in the near future, looks like it's going to stay that way. Now, it does come with two bases. Uh, it is two models, so two sprues. Not a lot of pieces here per sprue. Uh, still a good amount of detail but they are essentially much larger versions of the drones from the the core game and so i'm really interested to see how they play out it does say not to access the secret elements under the tray um, i'm just going to show you right here what those entail um, but specifically you wait until the quest rules advise you to now other than these great looking models let's take a look at what can be opened immediately First with the tiles. Now it looks like we have a turret of some kind. I'm not sure if you're going to be facing off against that or if it's just an objective. Uh, the alternate side of this tile does show three of those uh, smaller drones. Basically it looks like they're connecting some sort of power thing together. We have what looks like another turret, maybe a generator of some sort, and then uh, just another tile segment. Here are several additional smaller tiles. Now most of these look like maybe objective locations to look for. This one, we actually have two drills and then several drill tokens. I'm not sure what those are for. And then the last one is, looks like two other turrets, and then another section, and then kind of looks like another one of those little energy matrix type things. 
it does have a, a little insert basically advertising the ascension book and then we have the assembly guide for the guardian drones and now it is essentially three steps uh, or three main primary steps anyway and then it does have rules for using it in 40k I do know some people that are actually trying to use the use these uh, as kind of an HQ with a whole bunch of the drones for their entire army. So that would require a lot of packs of Servants of the Abyss in order to get a large number of drones in addition to the actual core set, unless they buy multiple core sets. Um, so right here we have the expansion book uh, going into the main components. So we have hover drone markers, connection markers, and unstable markers. Looks like there are three fragments uh, that you'll find in the deck. And then those fragment cards Looks like they will be some sort of entrance into a new area. So it kind of looks like you're going to be doing a little bit of teleporting around the, the map. We have our two variation, the regular Guardian Drone and the Waken Spindle Drone cards. As well as the repository envelope, which you don't open until the quest is completed. We have some new encounter cards, as well as resources and artifact cards. And then we have the various map and then fragment cards. Very cool stuff. Definitely looking forward to uh, building these models. Um, kind of took a rather simplistic approach on the regular spindle drones when I painted them. Um, so looking to do a bit more with these ones than I did previously. So we got the new issue of White Dwarf. And then I do like that they actually shown some pictures of uh, terrain use, made using nothing but sprues. Well, and paint, obviously. Um, and then fan painting sections. We have a fiction section story called The Terminus. It is a horror story. Um, so definitely looking forward to that. I've been loving a lot of the horror fiction that they've been doing lately. Um, which, ironically, the world of 40k and fan Warhammer Fantasy, for that matter, really have been rather horrific to begin with. Because, I mean, you could take almost any violent event and make it, you know, horrific. And so it, it kind of strikes me as odd that, you know, they now have a horror imprint uh, for those books. And after reading a couple of them, you know, there are some stories that, you know, just feel like another 40K story. Um, but then there are others that actually do truly take a... Uh, a step towards horror in terms of you know the events that are unfolding around them uh you know the descent into madness things like that 
so there's definitely a lot of good stuff that are really capitalizing on the horror aspect and then some of the stuff that is more focused on really just you know status quo uh as far as those worlds are concerned um so anyway our next section is worlds of warhammer uh basically going into the background of both main franchises and so it actually says you know they're here to talk about something funny um i mean i'm guessing it's things that that uh they found amusing about the lore uh, then we go into Untome Celestial, and it looks like there's going to be a lot more information, uh, Trogoth information in here, including uh, Mega Mob Allegiance abilities and battalions. And then so we have the army showcase of a Mega Knob. Um, And then we go into rules of engagement, uh, basically going into talk mostly about uh, points. So either this is your points for your army points, or we're talking uh, victory points, or kind of a combination of everything. I'm guessing, looking at it, it's probably more of a combination. Um, then we have an interview with a, a, a golden demon winner. And Slayer Sword winner, and even shows them step by step on how they did one of their entries. And then we go to Flashpoint Argavon system. Uh, looks like it's actually a campaign that you're going to get details on how to run uh, each month until it's over or each one is self-contained in each issue. It's actually quite a bit in there about that. Um, then we go into Forge Worlds, Galactic War Zones. Uh, so basically talking about, you know, different you know, terrain kind of setups and build up kind of uh, your own narrative wh where you're playing um, you know, give, and giving it more of a unique feel kind of changing how you're going to battle depending on you know what war zone you're in and then uh, they actually have sections about painting towards that war zone uh, converting towards it as well And then specifically Forge World Scenery Painting. And then we go into Echoes from the Warp. And this one's actually more about trial and error. I suspect that it's more to do with uh, uh, playtesting more than anything else. And then we go to our Beast Grave Glory Points section. Um, specifically about uh, tactics and gameplay. Now, there is a new Warhammer Underworlds coming out soon, uh, so definitely look forward to that. Then we go to a Beast Grave based fiction called The Beast Within. And based on the pictures, it looks like it's going to be uh, Orcs versus. Uh, the Daughters of Cain. And going into their tactics, where to start. Um, then we go to a photography section called the Scenes of Battle. And so basically setting up lighting, and, uh, background, and effects to better showcase uh, your miniatures and what's going on. And even shows you kind of a, a behind the scenes look at how they set some of these up. And then can get some really awesome photos if you actually take the time to do it. Now um, we have a Men of Metal Blackstone Fortress 
rules section. Um, basically, you're on a quest to capture a spindle drone. And now that we have Ascension, we'll actually be able to play some of that too. Uh, and then we go to a Middle Earth section, Tactica, um, called The Pale Orc Cometh. Um, so basically talking about like some of the heroes and villains and their tactics, but focusing mostly on the, the White Orc. Then we have Necromunda, uh, a campaign advice section, uh, which I don't believe we've actually done one of those before, at least in recent years for Necromunda. And how to run your own campaign. And then we continue with part seven of nine of Faith and Fire uh, by James Smollow Fiction. And judging on by how few pages there are left, I suspect that's going to go to the end of the issue. So almost the very end, and then we just go to uh, outside the studio, uh, different members of the team taking photos of some of what, what they're working on. And the next issue, the one that comes out on the 20th of November, uh, so next week, is uh, Index Tome Keepers. Um, so it looks like it's a, a, a Grey Knights army that's going to be focusing more on uh you know keeping you know like i guess holy scripture um for the imperium or something like that i'm completely speculating there uh don't know much about that now so we have five boxes of warcry starter sets uh four of which actually came out last week with the uh release of catacombs and then we have one of the older boxes the night haunts uh, which just leaves us the only remaining self-contained war cry box uh, that that we have yet to uh, show on the show is the uh, stormcast eternals And then also, just I know that uh, last week I mentioned we were going to be doing some uh, paint pot toppers for from uh, Dr. Tabletop, and so that is actually being postponed to next week because doing uh, those toppers is not going to be really beneficial unless you can see them in action. And since we're not doing any painting this week, I thought it best to postpone it by a week to put with our, uh, our next painting video where we'll be going over uh, some of the Imperial ships from the Skies of Fire box set. All right, so now, from what I've been told, the Night Hunt cards supposedly did not, like card pack, supposedly did not come with Banshee cards. I don't know if that's true or not because I never picked up any of those card packs. Um, but it is what I've read. Now we have a multi page instruction booklet, so a lot more pages than we typically see. In, in, in the chaos boxes, but I, you know, I still love the full color, uh, basically laying out exactly how to assemble them properly. And then we have two, four sprues, uh, three of which are the double sprues. So most of them are going to be our standard night haunt models. And then we have our Banshees as well. So the Banshees basically got their own spruce set. And so we have the Glaive Wraith Stalkers and the Grim Ghast Reapers. So looking at it, 
I would say these two sprues themselves are going to be our uh, actually I think I'm wrong um, it looks like it's more of a combination let's see Okay, so it's 13 plastic models total. Okay, so it's, it is four Glaive Wraith Stalkers, five Grim Grasp Reapers, well actually four of them, and then one, uh, one Extoller of Shyish, and then four of the Banshees. Now I really love their pre-decorated bases. Definitely give a lot of flair there. Um, a lot of detail, a lot of uh, kind of spooky things add on there like gravestones you have uh, broken bodies bones things like that then we have so for being able to make 13 models I find it odd that there are only five bases But that being said, I do also have the uh, the most recent uh, box set for uh, Age of Sigmar, which is full of Nighthaunt models. So whatever we can't build with the box, we'll be able to build separately. Uh, so we have two tile sets. Uh, these ones are actually color themed more towards the night haunt we have our abilities cards in multiple languages but the primary one well the only one that I need is the English one alright and then we have our stat cards. So looks like there's a couple of models that are not included in this set that you can use. Hopefully my boxes include the, the ones that I haven't actually built yet include those models in them so that way we can actually fill out the full roster and try things out. So that is our Night Haunt box. All right. So next one we're doing, and first of the new releases, is the Skaven box. Now, from what I'm hearing, doing this box does leave you a little bit at a disadvantage because you still need some of the Skaven's biggest hitters. And that's the, um, the Storm Fiends. So we have two of the large bases for the Rat Ogres. We have Looks like one sprue for, or actually two sprues for just clown rat, clan rats, because you're going to make 20 of them. Uh, one of them being the claw leader. We have the sprue for the rat ogres. Some good detail on the fur there. Uh, the clan rats actually look like they have a bit more detail on them. And then we have the pack master and giant rats. So you're going to get a ton of models in this set. Uh, I mean, just look at the number of bases you get right there. I mean, you're going to be doing, looks like 31 models out of this entire box set, which is pretty impressive.
And then we got our tokens again. We have our assembly guide. Not nearly as many steps in them as the uh, Night Hunt box. We have our abilities cards as well. And then we have a crap ton of stat cards. There are a lot of Skaven models that you actually don't get right off the bat. Um, like the Storm Fiends, there are Storm Vermin in here. So I'll definitely need to get some Storm Vermin. I really like the look of some of those models, some Plague Monks. And then really, really want to get a hold of some Storm Fiends as well. Some very cool models. Uh, one of the most interesting uh, warbands, in my opinion, based on uh, appearance alone. So definitely looking forward to getting to those guys. Now the one thing I don't like about this box is, as you may have noticed with uh, the Night Haunt box, it actually came with a smaller box inside that everything sat in, which really works for you know like rolling dice into. Um, also works for storage as well because you want to be able to transport your minis pretty well, so you could put them in there, lay them on their side and have them in a nice little box and maybe put some padding in there as well. But with the Skaven one, you don't have that. Now, part of it could be because the rat orders are just getting too big for something like that after you're done building everything. Not sure. Feeling this box for the flesh eater quartz, I'm expecting the same thing. And I'm correct. So this one we're going to be doing 13 miniatures. We have two large bases for the Crypt Haunters. And then we have two sprues for the Crypt Ghouls. Uh, and then three large sprues to put together the, uh, sorry, three Crypt Haunters. Then we have some more of the dead colored base or tokens. We have the cards as well. Okay, a lot of cards available. Uh, not being a Flesh Eater Count player, uh, definitely will need some other models to fill out the rest of the Warband, uh, at least options wise. So definitely liking the look of these, the, the Crypt Haunters themselves definitely look very, very, uh, not just formidable in the game, but very interesting uh, as far as you know their general look. And looking forward to uh, painting some of those guys. Growing uh, back in the late 90s, I was very much into the uh, undead factions. So I, you know, had my own uh, undead armies led by Nagash, uh, a lot of zombies, skeletons, things like that. And so the Flesh Eater counts when, when I first started getting into Age of Sigmar was one that really interested me uh, because a lot of the Flesh Eater counts in the lore actually came from Bretonia. And Bretonia was really my favorite uh, order faction. So I was really disappointed to see them kind of not make it out of there. So now we're on to the Iron Jaws. i drop one of the bases. So we have four, five sprues, and this one actually was folded. Uh, we have a, a really awesome looking banner, 
Love the uh, kind of minotaur head or bull head on top. And some big brutish bodies there. And then some more of the bodies. Now, what surprises me with how full the bodies are there, you know, we only have partial bodies for the other ones that are on these other sprues. And this one's mostly limbs and weapons, a little armor. And then here we got the heads and the rest of the limbs. We got a really awesome uh, big sword right there. Looks like a two-handed sword that some of the, or one of the uh, brutes will be using. And then it looks like there's actually quite a few cards in here which tells me that there's a lot of models you're going to be missing, most likely uh, out the gate. So right off the bat, I do see one, two that we're missing. Three that we're missing. So looks like only three extra cards. Um, and then as always, we have our general tokens and also have the abilities cards there as well. So that's the Iron Jaws. Now personally, I've heard that they are quite formidable in the game, but not really being an or a uh, orc or destruction player myself, uh, definitely you know, reserve that judgment there. And once again, I dropped into the base. And then lastly, the Caradron Overlords. Now, I am hoping to be able to pick up the uh, the Bugman's Brewery model uh, that just came out yesterday um, to go with these guys. The models are definitely very, very interesting. Uh, when, it, when the faction was first announced, I was very interested in uh, playing them as uh, I've always enjoyed the orcs uh, as far as the lore goes and seeing more or less steampunk orcs uh, thought they'd be a lot of fun but um, seeing as I'm typically more of a chaos player anyway, never really got around to them. So I figured with the Warcry that would be a great starting on point. Uh, so we have what either looks like a multi-barreled gun or some sort of bagpipe. Look, looks like we have a, a repeating rifle of some sort. Um, kind of some uh, backpacks that almost look like Space Marine backpacks. And we have some uh, really cool looking guns right here like that kind of looks like a flamethrower. So definitely interested in uh, getting to know more about their lore and what they got going on. And then we have these balloon type things that allow three of them to float. And then just really enjoying the detail. I love the face masks on them as well. Mm. Very cool. And then it doesn't look like there's a lot of cards there. Oh, actually, I stand corrected. There are a ton of cards there. Uh, they just shifted and revealed themselves. And it looks like 
other than the three flyers, um, there's five different builds of individual models. So that basically accounts for seven of the cards. And there are a lot of cards here. So there are a lot of units you're not getting to feature right away. Um, so definitely looking forward to uh, trying those guys out. Once I put this back in the box, then we're on to Blood Bowl. All right, so as I said, it is a very heavy box. Now, for the first time ever, um, the teams inside, they actually have enough in here that you can field an entire team straight out of the box. Um, so the orcs and the uh, the empire teams. It also comes with two referees, which I've never seen uh, official referee models in the past. Um, but I know that a lot of people can kind of make their own. But be, myself not being a big Blood Bowl player, uh, it's quite possible I just completely missed them. All right. So right off the bat, uh, you know, the first thing I noticed is that there are multiple colors. Uh, uh, and so it's pretty clear that the green colors are going to be your green skins. Uh, the red are going to be your your empire team uh, and i'm guessing the blue yeah those are the referees um and actually what's interesting is it kind of looks like gotrek and felix um as referees so it'd be interesting to see in the lore if uh if that turns out to be who they are um, we do have one of one of the trolls as a big heavy hitter for the orc team A lot of individual model sprues as well. I'm guessing for the some of the bigger hitters. And we have our main hero for the Empire. A ogre to help them. And then we have two full sprues of everything else. Um, including it comes with two dice or sorry, two uh, tokens for flipping. And then the rest of the models for those factions. Love the details, especially for the Empire team. The, the Orc team is actually probably the best looking Orc team I've seen out of a box uh, since the game's original inception. Um, you know, back in the day, I really loved looking at the, uh, the homemade uh, teams and I've seen a lot of really cool ones come out of, over the last year or two. Um, you know, the orcs, a lot of great detail. I love their their kind of a totem or or a, I guess place marker type thing. And then we have our various trackers. And then we have one of the nice little inserts like usual. On the other side though, it actually lists all of the different teams that are already out or going to be out soon. And it is a very thick hardcover book. I uh, really like that. And then it has a quick rule sheet as well. We have a lot of bases. Then we actually have two dice sets, one orc, one imperial. So that's really cool. 
I wish that the the both sets were um, not just colored for their faction, but also you know, had some uh, common iconography on there as well. our two dugouts. Now any orders online for the game do come with a winter theme dugout for each faction. Then we have our board itself which is huge. So that's really cool. I love the details on the board. I have seen a lot of people come up with some really cool uh, one-of-a-kind boards as well. So I'm looking forward to seeing more of those over the next couple of months after uh, people get their hands on the box. But overall, the models look fantastic. Uh, I've always loved the, the uh, Blood Bowl aesthetic. And the fact that uh, it's meant to be kind of more of a uh, uh, more encompassing game because there are a lot of people who don't really get into the hobby, you know, who are more like, say, sports fans. And so it's a nice way of bringing you know, more of those sports fan type people into the hobby because now they actually get to play the game you know in the fantasy setting All right, and then lastly we're opening up the rule book and then it's not just a quick rule sheet it's actually a quick rule uh, mini book almost and I actually shouldn't have put the models back in until I put this back in. I love the the built-in bookmark that they have on there. That's really awesome. Make reading it a lot easier. So that way, if you can't finish it in the same sitting, you can put your bookmark in there and continue later. And those types of bookmarks are really hard to lose unless you're intentionally trying to rip it out of the back. Now, what I think is really awesome is it's, so, it's actually got the rules for all of the existing teams in it. Um, let's see. And it even has the necromantic horror team that is coming out at launch as well in it. Um, so a lot of really cool stuff in there. I know that Forge World is actually re releasing a Zote player. Uh, so that one's definitely worth checking out. The um, They're also coming out with a, a Tree Man figure. I don't know if that is um, more in line with Forge World, or if that's actually more with uh, GW proper. I believe it's GW directly, not Forge World. Um, but looking at the models on the back, tons of detail. Love how original a lot of them look. Now, one thing that you could do pretty easily, I would say, is you could take the Orc team, and with a little bit of uh, uh, clipping and green stuff, you could easily make them into an Iron Jaws warband uh, for Warcry. The humans could easily be modified to be uh, 
uh, Cities of Sigmar and the Ogre <sighs> and the Troll would, would be able to feature, be featured somewhere in there as well. Um, so a lot of really cool stuff. Definitely love the look of these models. I love that for the first time ever they're doing everything self-contained in one box for both factions so you don't have to go out and buy a second team uh, or second box for your team rather so very cool stuff I love the artwork uh, definitely looking forward to playing this now when we played the first game um, or not I'm sorry the the second edition that came out a couple years ago that one my son completely kicked my ass and if I get him to play me on this one again I'm definitely not going to go as easy on him as I was and I'm hoping that I'll be able to uh, uh, beat him this time as well <sighs> but that's it for tonight uh, thank you to Games Workshop for sharing Blood Bowl with us um, definitely looking forward to playing it and then uh, same with the white dwarf uh, looking forward to read that more in depth and so as always have yourselves a great weekend uh, and then make sure you are wearing your mask and social distancing that and that is huge uh, I mean take it from me I actually almost died from this at the beginning of the year so it is not worth playing around with and taking that risk and I mean, I only, and it's only because they visited a city where they didn't even know that it was in the U.S. at the time and ended up getting it while I was there. So, and even before then, I was always a big, uh, you know, hand washing person and uh, you know, kind of social distancing from people outside of my group. And I still caught it. So, you know, it's not worth the risk and so just make sure you guys are being safe um, again thank you guys for watching uh, next week we will be returning to painting with uh, the skies of fire box set and so looking forward to getting that done uh, other than that you guys have a good night have a good weekend i'll see you next week